Okay, so welcome back to another video. Here's a little proof we like to verify, and this is in terms of dealing with sequences. So we have that we let a sub k, a partial sequence, be a sequence satisfying um, the recurrence relation. We have that a sub 1 is equal to 3, and we have that a sub k plus 1 is equal to a sub k plus k plus 2 for k is greater than or equal to 1. We want to show that the following inequality holds true for all natural numbers n. So we have, in terms of a product, 1 minus 1 divided by a sub 1 times 1 minus 1 divided by a sub 2. Keep going all the way up to 1 minus 1 divided by a sub n is strictly greater than 1 over 3. So if we're dealing with sequences, of course, it's always good to play around with these numbers and add more to the construction. So again, we're given a sub 1 is equal to 3. So what about if we want to consider, consider making numbers of a sub 2, a sub 3, and so on and so forth, all the way up to a sub n. So that's where we need to analyze and make the observation of these numbers. And then eventually what we can do is using that recurrence relation of that observation such that we can actually replace this with a different equality that eventually what it comes down to is that indeed that this will work that it is going to be greater than or equal to 1 over 3. So with all this in mind, so let's actually just start off with um, creating some numbers of our sequence. So let's first write out our given. So a sub 1 is equal to 3. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to break this up to say that this is 1 plus 2. So well, why are we doing this? This will come in handy as we actually keep continue going on with the numbers. So now let's go to a sub 2, which that means a sub 1 plus 1 plus 2 is the same thing as 1 plus 2, then 1 plus 2, aka 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay, now go to a sub 3. So that means a sub 3 is equal to a sub 2 plus 2 plus 2. So that means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2. So that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. I think you can get the picture on where we're going on here. So let's try a couple more numbers. a sub 4. So that means a sub 3 plus 3 plus 2. So that means 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And then put that together plus 5. Okay, that's good. So we're so far as we analyzing, it's the sum of the n natural numbers. Let's go to one more, a sub 5. So do the same thing. So this is a sub 4 plus 4 plus 2. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Okay, so we're getting the picture here. So let's actually go on all the way up to a sub n. So we can actually see that this is actually in the term of a partial sum. In other words, this is the partial sum all the way up to n plus 1, starting with our index k is equal to 1 of k. And we know that the close form for that is indeed going to be equal to n plus 1 times n plus 2, all this being divided by 2. So with this, now let's actually just substitute this back into over here as we can see that this actually forms a nice little construction for these products. So to put this all together, everything on this uh, hand side is in other words the same thing as the partial product of the upper index n and then k is equal to 1 of 1 subtract 1 divided by a sub k and then in other words we see that for the kth term aka the same thing as the nth term so we can just substitute this back in for exactly written as follows this is the partial sum all the way up to n k is equal to 1 of 1 subtract 2 and then I'm actually gonna um, multiply the two factors together so in other words this is k squared plus 3k at this with 2 and then if I just combine the common denominator together, so, and that means cross multiply, so in other words, I'll put that as the same thing written as our numerator is going to be k squared plus 3k, and then denominator k squared plus 3k plus 2. Okay, um, so we can actually do a little bit of factoring. Well, technically for the top we can, and then just undoing the factoring from over here, so back to the binomial factors, which indeed is the same thing and now as n, k is equal to 1 of k times k plus 3, and then we just divide it by k plus 1, and then multiply by k plus 2. Now, as we take the product series, in other words, we can actually write this as the same as the product of the numerator divided by the product of the denominator. So I'll, I'll put that as the same equivalence. So what we can do here is, is basically the most straightforward method we can think of, and that's actually to perform the following expansion. So we do the expansion over here for k. So in other words, that's the same thing as 1 times 2 times 3, then go up all the way up to n. And then now we just multiply this with the product of k plus 3. So pretty much it starts at 4, and then times 5, times 6, all the way up to n plus 3. Okay, so that's our, that's our numerator, just like that. So now we just do the same thing for the denominator. So giving us now just 2 times 3 times 4, all the way up to n plus 1. 
then multiply with the k plus 2 expansion that starts from times 3 times 4 times 5 and then ending it off with n plus 2. So you'll notice that everything is in terms of products, the natural number specifically, but what's nice is that this is actually in, again, the same thing as written as the factorial. So we know that one then times all the way up to n, that's just gonna be n factorial. However, we have an n plus three going up, starting from four to n plus three of that product. So of course I can write that as n plus three factorial, but we're missing the terms for three times two times one. So you just perform that division again, and that'll yield us with divided by six. Do the same thing from the bottom, it's just the same um, reasoning. This is just n plus one factorial. Don't worry because it's just times one and it's not included, but that's okay, it's still the same thing. Do the same thing for n plus two factorial, but we're missing the two times one that just performed that division, so it's just n plus two factorial and then divided by two. Then in other words, if we just simplify everything out, we have the six, I can factor out from that denominator, so it's one over six, and then divided by one half, perform that multiplication together slash division with fractions, then that'll just give us one divided by three, and then that leaves us now with the following. Okay, so notice that I have n factorial and an n plus one factorial. So that leaves us with an n plus one on the bottom since afterwards n factorials will just cancel from both the numerator and the denominator. And then as we see, we have an n plus three factorial and an n plus two factorial. But going with that expansion, we see that everything all the way up from n plus two factorial is just gonna cancel, yielding us that we're just left with n plus three on the numerator and then divided by n plus one on the denominator. Then if we multiply this out, of course, I'll have that this is n plus 3 then divided by 3 times n plus 1 and then after simplifying some more so that means I can write this as 1 over 3 and then add this with 2 divided by 3 times n plus 1 and what's nice is that indeed we want to show that this entire inequality well from the left hand side is greater than 1 over 3 which we did this equality is the same thing yielding to here and so I can create this bound saying that the left hand side is indeed strictly greater than the right hand side for no matter what natural number n since it's always 1 over 3 and then add with some fraction it's always going to be greater than the right hand side which actually indeed just completes the proof and just like that so therefore the left hand side 1 minus 1 over a sub 1 all the way up to the product 1 minus 1 divided by a sub n, which in other words, we write this in terms of a product. So here is the same thing yielding to here is indeed strictly greater than 1 over 3, which completes the proof just like that. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.